All right, welcome back for today's community conversation. Michelle Anderson with El Paso Animal Services is back in the studio with us to talk about some of the things they have going on and to highlight the importance of getting your pets vaccinated. Michelle, thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks we have a special us. guest this morning too. This is Negra, right? Yes, this is <laughs> Negra. She's about six or seven years old. She came into the shelter last June. Um, so she's been with us for quite some time, but uh, she's been in foster a couple times before. Oh, she's, she's oh, rolling. <laughs> Um, she's been in foster a couple of times as well, and her foster's given her rave reviews. Um, said that she's just really great in the home, just wants to hang out on the couch, doesn't really require a whole lot, just wants a soft place to land and some love. She's mm, cute. She is so <laughs> precious. I, I guess before we jump into vaccinations, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the importance of adopting larger dogs? Because yeah. oftentimes there is a lot of older dogs in the shelter and they're just as important as love and lovable too. They're yeah. also easier, right, than puppies. I, I <laughs> definitely think so. Um, I have three large dogs myself and I always promise myself I'll never get a puppy again because they Hard. are a lot of work. Um, but I think we talked about it last month um, when we were here about our larger dogs um, and our older dogs just don't get adopted as quickly um, as our puppies or our smaller dogs. So they'll tend to sit at the shelter for longer periods of time like Nagda. She's been with us um, almost a year. So um, it's it's definitely important to, to take these guys into consideration because yeah. they're still such lovable pets. Yeah. Um, they probably would do great in your home and you just might not have ever thought of taking a larger dog at uh, dog home with you. Um, so I definitely recommend considering taking a larger dog or meeting one at least. Yeah, and when, you know, this month we were talking a little yesterday and you were telling me it's actually Pet Vaccination Month, National Pet Vaccination Month. Yep. And obviously making sure your animal's vaccines are up to date is just as important as making sure maybe your child's vaccines are up yeah. to date. Can you talk a little bit about that and then what this means for animals in your shelter who go in who maybe, who aren't vaccinated at all? Definitely. So um, not only is it just really important for your pet's overall health, it's also required by city ordinance and state law for your pet to be vaccinated um, by rabies. Um, that is a yearly vaccine that your pet uh, requires. Um, it also needs to be administered by a U.S. vet. So a lot of times people think, oh, it's a cheaper option. I'm just going to head across the border, get my pet uh, seen by a veterinarian over in Juarez. Um, unfortunately, those vaccines are not valid in the United States. So if anything happens, um, your pet bites someone, um, you're required to do a hospital quarantine, it's going to cost a lot more money. Um, so it's best to just go see uh, a veterinarian um, in the United States and get that rabies vaccine. Um, and while that one's required by law, there's a couple other vaccines that aren't necessarily required but are really strongly recommended. Um, those are vaccines like distemper and parvo vaccines, both for cats and for dogs. Um, if you guys remember, we had a distemper outbreak at the shelter last yeah. year because um, distemper is just very prevalent and endemic to our region. Um, so a lot of pets that are unvaccinated, they're unprotected from these extremely deadly diseases um, and they're very contagious as well. So really making sure that you get your pet vaccinated for those um, diseases as well because it's going to be their best protection for them. Michelle, last time you were here, we talked about capacity at the shelter. Um, you know, some people were saying that potentially some of the pets were being turned down. What is it looking like now? Are you still having an issue? Are you still accepting pets? Is, are any, is anyone being turned down? Um, we are still accepting pets every single day. Um, we probably have about two to 300 dogs coming in every single week. Um, so still having pets coming to the shelter, um, still are looking for fosters and adopters as well. Um, or if you find a pet, just kind of hanging on to them, helping them reunite with their families. Chances are they're not too far from home. Um, that's going to help us tremendously uh, because we are still over capacity at the at the shelter and across our shelter locations across the city as well. Um, our animal protection officers have also been working on a few hoarding cases and we're needing to make space for those pets coming in. So really putting that call out to the community to help us um, make some space at, at our main shelter so we can bring those pets in most need in. Yeah, let's see if we can get one last look at <laughs> yeah, Negra right here. She is so, so beautiful, you she's guys. Just a, she's just uh, a chill Just girl. so beautiful. So please, 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 if you are looking for a larger, lovable dog, Negra is up for adoption. If you want to check out Michelle's interview with us today, you can find that on our website, kfoxtv.com, and you can check out past community conversations on there as well. Yes, we'll be right back after the break.